Hey guys, Mish here, and today I have a study for you on how to stop binging or overeating when you have negative emotions, so pretty much when you're feeling crappy. So a lot of research has shown that the main cause of binge eating disorder is negative emotions. So you eat in response to feeling crappy, generally. And a lot of you have asked me about this topic, so I dug up this study, and I'm a former binger, so if any of my fellow bingers or former bingers may remember, Usually what happens with a binge is you feel really bad either about yourself or about a situation and then you look to food for comfort because, you know, it releases all this dopamine, it's fun to eat. But then, usually, if you really binged a lot, then you'll feel really sick and just really, really bad afterwards, either from guilt, from weight gain, or just from not enjoying feeling like you're gonna actually pop. And then that creates more negative emotion and then it just creates this vicious cycle of binging and feeling bad and binging more and feeling worse. And so the reason I wanted to share this study with you is to help you break out of that cycle because boy is it nice to be on the other side of my binging past and I want to help you guys get there too. So in today's study, the researchers took a group of participants who had binge eating disorder and then a control group of participants who were weight matched. So both groups had the same weight and they're both around BMI 34, so they were both overweight. And in the binge eating group, they had been binging about four times per week on average for the last six months, just so you can get an idea of how often that was happening. And the goal of these researchers was to see if they could use a certain cognitive strategy for preventing these participants from overeating or binging in response to negative emotions. And so in the experiment, they showed participants a really sad movie scene that has actually been scientifically proven to make people really sad, the specific scene. And it was about losing a loved one, so heavy stuff. And so half of each group did a suppression strategy, which I'll tell you more about, and the other did a reappraisal strategy while watching the sad movie. For the people who were in the suppression strategy group, the researchers told them to try to completely hide how they were feeling during this really depressing movie. So they were told to try to hide their facial expressions, so keep it totally neutral, try to make it so that anyone watching couldn't tell they were sad. So pretty much just they were told to just bottle it all up and keep it inside. Whereas the other group, or the other half of the participants, were told to reappraise the movie. So they were told to sort of focus on different aspects of the movie rather than just the sad part. So for example, they were told to focus on how well the actors were doing and how the photographer must have been lining the shot up to get all the details in and stuff. So really focusing on like objective parts of the movie that were not related to the sadness of it. They were told to distance themselves from it. So sort of take an internal step back, they said. So sort of put some space between them and the movie so that they weren't feeling so emotionally involved in it. And then the test came. So after the movie, the participants were told that they would be doing a taste test, which was just like a sneaky front for what they were actually doing. And they were told that they would be rating how good the food tasted. So the researchers told the participants that the experiment was just to look at how a sad movie affected how good things tasted. But in reality, the researchers looked at how much the participants ate after each of these different cognitive strategies during the movie. So they were given a bowl of biscuits, which I think refers to cookies, because this study was done in Germany. And they were also given a bowl of chocolate M&Ms, and they were told to fill out this questionnaire about how good each of these foods tasted. And they were given 15 minutes to eat the food and fill out the questionnaire. And they found that in both the binge eating and the control groups, the participants who did the suppression strategy, so just trying to keep all their feelings bottled up during that depressing movie, actually ate 40% more than the group who was told to reappraise their feelings about the movie. So while this was only about 30 calories over the course of 15 minutes, if you were to think of that in terms of a binge, let's say your usual binge would be about 1200 calories, then if you had the effect that was seen in the study, you would instead have only an 800 calorie binge. And so that 400 calories that you didn't eat could make a huge difference, and that's just from reappraising your feelings instead of bottling them up. So even in those people who said that they didn't binge and didn't eat for emotional reasons, they still got this big benefit of reappraisal compared to suppression. So even if you don't struggle with binging completely, this can still help you eat less in response to feeling bad. And more importantly, this can just help you not feel bad. And interestingly, they found that in general, the binge eating disorder group tended to do a lot more suppressing of their feelings in their daily life just in general. 
and a lot less reappraising of their feelings than the control group did. So it seems like actually suppressing your feelings and not reappraising might be a reason why people develop in eating in the first place. And now you may be asking, well, how do I really reappraise in real life? How can we make this apply to you to help you? And I have some tips for you. I'm wearing my psychologist hat today. Next time I think I'll actually get a hat to put on. So in general, reappraising can either mean thinking of things about a situation that can make you feel less crappy about it, or even better, is trying to find the positives in a situation. So for example, let's say you've just been broken up with, and you are feeling really bummed, and maybe your natural response is to have feelings of worthlessness or self-loathing or feeling like you don't deserve to be loved. But with reappraisal, what you could do is think of, well, maybe he was a jerk anyway, maybe he wasn't the best match for you, like maybe he was actually taking your time away from your hobbies and your friends, and you can focus on the fact that there's definitely someone better out there for you. And so how you do reappraisal is you take a situation and you just focus on different aspects of it. Because really a situation can only cause negative emotions if you decide that there's something negative about it. Just changing your thoughts about things can do a lot for your negative emotions and therefore help prevent binges. So if you ever have a negative situation or you're dealing with a bunch of negative emotions, here are some questions you can ask yourself to be able to reappraise the situation. So for example, you could ask yourself, what did I learn from this? Has this helped me grow or develop as a person? And these first two questions are great for situations that there's really no bright side to, and that is one form of reappraisal. It's just to focus on, well, now you're a stronger person because you've gotten through this horrible thing that's happened. And some other questions you can ask for the situations that might actually have a silver lining to them is, are there any positive outcomes that are coming out of the situation? Am I grateful for any part of this? Like, has the situation created anything good at all. And the thing with reappraisal is that it starts to become natural. So at first it might feel weird, you might be like, why am I writing down all these good things about this horrible situation? It's just annoying. But over time you'll find yourself doing it naturally, and this can be a huge way to actually undo the cycle of binging. Because if you learn to deal with your negative emotions, then that can lead to less binging, which can lead to less negative emotions because you binged, and then it'll just be instead a cycle of good things happening. So I felt really inspired to do this video today because I really want to help those of you who are stuck in that terrible cycle. I was there for a long time, so I really hope that this can help you start to get out of that. And I'm gonna try to keep this video short and sweet like I used to with my five to 10 minute videos because I've realized that as I've gotten further along in my PhD, I tend to ramble a lot more about these studies because they're just really interesting, okay? But I'm gonna try to just give you the highlights so that people who don't have 18 minutes to spend watching a study can get something out of this. And then I'm going to put all the extra details in a separate blog post, which I will link below. So those of you who like to get all the deets like me can go check that out. And then those of you here can get the highlights. So let me know if you think that system will work for you in the comments below. I am curious to hear your thoughts. So there you have it, my hopefully shorter than usual video on how you can stop binging or overeating. Also, please hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more videos. I would really appreciate it. And I'm going to be doing more videos like this because a lot of you voted that you would like to see more intuitive eating content from me. And technically my PhD is in psychology, so this might even be more my field than my usual diet stuff. So yeah, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions and I really, really hope this can help you. And check out my Patreon if you wanna support me making videos. You can also help out by liking and sharing my videos. I would really appreciate it. So see you next time.